Great. Awesome. Okay. Half an hour for this. Hopefully it won't take that long. Um, closing thoughts uh, in no particular order. Um, reminder to get swag. Um, wouldn't hurt, especially if you're going to TPAC or events later today, to grab some extra to hand out. Um, again, I've got some. Vince has the biggest cache of swag. Um, reminder for Googlers who have one of these badges, you probably got a lovely email instructing you what to do with it um, from reception, but the short answer is there is a Dropbox. Um, it says something about including your name if you return it on someone else's behalf, but uh, just double check that it has indeed your name on it. Um, let's see, okay, those are the mechanical ones. Um, let's see, uh, skipping around in a little bit. I'm planning on sending out a survey to everybody who all registered, so I have email addresses. Um, and uh, I thought it might be good to actually discuss what questions to ask, um, because you might have ideas on what did you want to learn from somebody else uh, here. And with the idea that the survey will have questions marked as this, your response here will be shared publicly. Um, and some marked as, you know, if you've got private feedback, like that speaker said something that they didn't think was appropriate, we'd love to get that feedback as well. Um, so questions I thought of to include are the obvious, should we have another meetup um, and why uh, and where? Uh, and uh, Googlers will probably understand why I wrote this next one. What impact did this get together? Did this meetup have on your work? Yeah, okay. Uh, and then obviously free form private feedback. Uh, are there other questions that people would like I mean, obviously we can ask here, but um, what would you like to see on a survey? Should we try to invite or uh, involve other cross vendors so this doesn't become a chromium only thing? I will note that this is a Chromium, chromium only. I know, but like, we are convened under the Chromium Good Conduct. This okay. is a Chromium project. Um, we talk about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, although one, one could argue that uh, is, is BlinkCon not the same thing where it's a Chromium get together and yet we've got folks from Mozilla attending? There's an interesting question there, which is kind of. We want a TPAC meetup for people who are actually working on this level of web platform functionality that is not just public. That's probably. I think that the YTG gets functional. <laughs> <laughs> can you just brain dump the gender wise? Can you brain dump TPAC before we finish? Does it make sense? Brain dump TPAC. So, so okay. everything. We, yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah, just go. before we wrap up, yeah, let's. Do a quick preview of things we know that are happening at TPAC. Take it away. That are, that are relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Should, should we do? Well, we should finish sure. the survey questions. Oh, I'm okay. just saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm we're not. We're not. Yeah. Okay. Another question. Survey questions. Uh, by the way, Chris, I failed to capture your question. In if you want to think about how we would ask that as a question, I agree with the sentiment. I'm not sure how to. It's related to the. Yeah. Yeah. Another question for the survey. Uh, best or preferred way to communicate? Impressions on Slack? Uh, let, me, let me interpret that. Uh, best or preferred way to communicate in general around Fugu topics? Yes, yes okay. exactly. Yeah, we used it to coordinate meeting at places and um, you know other things that came up while we were here, right? So. Like social outings, ah, you know. So, so still communicate during the meetup. During right? the meetup, and yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, another question that comes to my mind is: How can we make this more inclusive, not just of of um, other browser vendors, but getting a wider demographic of um, people within the Chromium community. I 
think, um, yeah, I meant we could maybe prompt who did we forget to invite? Yep. Uh, so we remember next time. Uh, for example, it turns out that the folks who were working on um, uh, web codex and web transport were having meetings right next door. Oops. Dan? I guess uh, a little bit in that vein would be like, uh, or in your opinion, what describes the scope of the CDA? Yeah. Because I feel like if we're thinking a lot about who should be expand to or how would this meeting might be used by people or somebody else, so that things might have. What, what value did you get out of this and what would you describe that scope? Yeah. So. In case you didn't hear that, how would you describe the scope of this meeting? Um, yeah. Do like a, oh, uh, like a, was this the right? Was this the right size, like the right number of people? Mm -hmm. uh, would you want it to be bigger or even smaller and, you know, have more direct conversations about things or? Yep. Was it good? good what size. would you hope to get out that you didn't? Mm, good one. Great, thanks for doing my work for me in terms of putting the survey together. Okay. Uh, expect to see that. I, I would love to get that out this weekend. Who knows if it'll actually happen. Uh, okay. Now, other topics that we want to cover. Um, yeah. T package and items we should know about. Uh, I know various people here, such as Vince and Dan, have been planning um, T pack discussions. Uh, what, yeah, what what should we know about? Gosh. Got like a document that is not ready for copy pasting. Um, it is, I have a Google internal facing doc that doesn't really have anything confidential in it, um, but it's also not in a good shareable state. Uh, okay, so there's, so the first thing is, I would like to ask the room, is there anything that you would like to get out of TPAC in the FUGU context? Actually, pro, uh, two issues and uh, uh, two issues in the agenda for like native process and API. So just two uh, issues around native file system API and service workers uh, discussion. I'd like to help. Um, I'd like the folks who are here to help convey uh, to folks who have questions uh, or worries about our approach to things like privacy, security, and uh, API iteration rate and speed, because we are the nexus of all of those risk factors as far as other, other vendors and other engines are concerned, um, to understand the kind of care and thoughtfulness that we have demonstrated here over the last two days. Um, Rather, y'all have. I did none of that. Um, <laughs> I'm mostly daring people to go faster and take more risk. Um, so uh, maybe we can talk about how that can that can happen best. But um, it seems like asking uh, folks to look for people who have Fugu pins is a good start. And I think it, it doesn't hurt if people are wondering what Fugu is to just say it's our name for a collection of projects. But every individual API, any individual capability is being tackled on its own full normal standards process. Explainers and use cases and specs and lots of iteration and finding an appropriate home for incubation and eventual working group. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to get out of TPAC um, kind of feedback from people who think Fugu is not a good idea. and But not just no. I want no because, and then we can um, tackle them. Um, I mean. <laughs> Yes. 
like because no is not useful, right? Um, I think I would be uh, now. I have been to enough tea packs to. Um, to know that not everything that's presented there has traction or is necessarily a good idea. Um, but I think when we, if we hear of something that sounds like a useful addition to, uh, to Fugu and it looks like it, uh, it and it looks like it's, uh, you know, has legs that, uh, that we, that we try to, uh, uh, network with whoever's, whoever's working on it. I, uh, not quite on topic to the question, but I'm just going to take this opportunity to, to say this to the group. Um, I think one of the things that really helps, uh, collaboration at TPAC is convincing people or helping people understand the problem. Um, sometimes we forget that the people we're presenting do like, aren't familiar with what we're talking about or haven't worked on it in a couple of years and might not remember why the, the solution being presented is being presented. Um, and sometimes people will get caught up in nitpicking stuff if they don't understand the problem. And so um, just want to uh, kind of reiterate that it's really valuable to start by focusing on the problem and making sure people understand what the problem is. And if anybody doesn't think it's a problem, then that's really amazing feedback and, and it's good to listen to that. Um, and then once everybody's on the same page about the problem, it's people work together way better because then people don't nitpick small stuff. They think about why the API might not, might not apply well or use cases of, you know, aspects of the problem that the API, API might not address instead of saying, hey, we should use callbacks instead of events and arguing about that for a long time. Um, so yeah, uh, and it, it gets more of a, people work together a lot better. So anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. So I, I'm really looking forward to the, the Fugu breakout session at TPAC on Wednesday because I think in the in the spirit of understanding the problem, I think that there's a feeling among some other vendors that just that that we are not solving problems that the web platform should solve. That the that they, uh, that I cannot talk to a USB device from my web page is not a problem, um, and so I I would really love to get <laughs> as a as a meta point, I would love to get out of TPAC. Um, a a better understanding of the of, the, of that position, um, and I would also love, like I think I said earlier, to um, to take Thomas's slides, sort of uh, to have an answer to that question. That first question is like, okay, I would like to I would like to add an API to add to uh, web pages to access serial. Why is that a thing? Okay, let's accept accept that like that native capabilities are important. Okay, let me talk about why serial is important because I can't even get to why serial is important mm -hmm. if I can't explain why yeah. the web is better than native apps. Yeah, basically, continuing on Riley's thing, I just want, uh, maybe Alex, uh, he will be the perfect guy to answer this. If you give us 30 seconds pitch against like uh, web platform versus document reader, like web as a document reader versus as a platform, app platform, you know, just to convince some naysayers about how, how would you position that? I don't think I can convince anyone that they're wrong. I can listen to their concerns, though, um, and ask questions. And my general approach is to um, ask what fraction of their day-to-day -day computing they'd like the web to handle. If that is a small percentage, then what we're doing here doesn't matter. And if they would like the web to be the way that they experience most of most of the things in their life, because it has advantages that they would like to see um, play out on to, to their benefit um, in other places, then then that can at least help you understand whether or not there's a a place to to move forward from. Um, I don't know that <laughs> the Socratic method does not work quickly, so <laughs> I would also suggest buying them beer. <laughs> I would say that what Alex just said is one of the most important parts about TPAC, which is that um, beer really helps. Um, 
<laughs> because uh, honestly, the reason that I go and and go face to face is because of beer. Uh, <laughs> Be, but seriously, like the meetings themselves, we, we, we discuss things, we make slow progress. Uh, but when you go out afterwards or you go out to lunch or you, you hit a bar after the meetings, and I don't necessarily mean you have to drink beer, but you get more insight and you get more personal and you connect with people um, on a layer that allows you to make progress in a, meaning, in a much more meaningful way. And then you can come back the next year and you, you can add to that progress. Uh, and I, I don't think that value can be under. <laughs> I don't think that value can be uh, understated. Uh, so it's a joke, but really it is important to social and to understand people's problems by talking to them about them instead of voting them down or something. <laughs> so as the person who has asked everyone for their feedback on the session uh, breakout session proposal. Um, something that I want to, yeah, I want us to do as well is um, also to listen openly for everyone's concerns against us because we live in a bubble. Everyone here is convinced what we're doing is right, and um, it is right. Else, most of us wouldn't be here, I guess. Um, we could do other jobs at Microsoft, Google, Intel, whatever. Um, but yeah, um, also trying to be open why they say something. And some of us have a very long history with other browser vendors, so they know like the past some of us like me they don't like i'm naive i'm new um i hear things with new ears maybe so i guess giving everyone a chance to understand what is everyone's feeling could help for this session and um if if one thing we get out of this is um a better feeling why someone says no and uh, i think who was it uh was it olivier or some, someone said yeah give us more than just a no i think this is the core thing I want to get out of the session. And um, yeah, listening is a very big part of that. So um, yeah, maybe, are, are we done with um, the, the other points? Can we, can we talk about the session itself very briefly? Yeah. Yeah? Sure. Could you, could you cl just click the link on the for a more capable web? Um, yeah, this is the Wednesday thing. Um, uh, it should be. Uh, it should be a deep link. <laughs> yeah, it was, and then I zoomed in, and oh, okay. apparently some browsers <laughs> don't handle that well. So <laughs> um, for, for the people at Microsoft, thank you very much for joining. And for the people at Intel, obviously, uh, same. To give you some background, um, the first iteration of the session proposal started with uh, Eric Lawrence's words, where he said, um, did I throw that away? I think I striked it at the end of the document. Um, so anyway, uh, Eric Lawrence had a tweet storm where he said, look, the web is in danger and stuff. Um, so I think when we start to present the problem, um, first, we need to very briefly talk about what we do. So I think we should have a list of APIs, not show any code, not like give not anyone any chance to write any to, to ask any kind of design question. Like, why did you show choose whatever promises here or not? La 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 synchronous. This should not be the session. Um, we should briefly inform people what is Fugu, like just a list of APIs, very briefly show them this is what we do. Um, but then very quickly open to questions and uh, yeah, just have a couple of us there. And um, it's breakout unconference, so there will be competing sessions. Um, there will be the mini app session that some of us, including me, uh, have shown some interest in. But um, like, if we can agree on, I wouldn't call it a canned response, but if we can agree on something like, what do we see as the biggest threat for the web? Why do we do Fugu? Can we come up with an answer? Can we say people would just do native, or people would just do not build applications? Or like, can can we come up with why do we do this as a cannedish response? Maybe just to open as a joint opinion the forum, and then we can, of course, still have um, individual yeah, views on why certain decisions were taken. And uh, not everyone agrees that certain things should be behind a prompt or not, or should be just freely accessible and stuff. But I'm like, have we a do we have a joint vision why we do something like Fugu? I guess we do. We should have a mission statement somewhere. It's Google, after all. Vince, you were crafting a, a Fugu mission statement recently. Well, putting them on the, on the spot, I, I think my short pitch 
uh, off the cuff would be stealing a quote from one of our directors, Ben Goodger, is we want the web to be capable of letting users accomplish any task that they want, corollary being, and that the web is the predominant open platform on the planet. Yeah, so the, pro the problem part of this is that if, and this is Google data, so it may not match everyone else's understanding. On desktop, as I mentioned, I think on Wednesday, the, the web's doing all right. Um, we've got challenges, there are threats, there are risks. Um, we can do better. We have to meet the needs of developers wherever they're going. Uh, but on mobile, uh, the web is not doing OK. Um, we are not the center of computing. The trajectory is not towards the web being the center of computing and what that means um, in the short term. In fact, I thought it was medium term, but I, I actually, my, my sites have dimmed somewhat. Um, in the short term, if we do not convince developers that we are going to help them successfully navigate uh, getting users, keeping users, re-engaging users, and helping users meet the user's need, then um, the web will not survive another generation. I have a dissenting view. It's OK if the web dies. It's OK. It's not, we, we care about the people. So today, <laughs> <laughs> but, but today, <laughs> <laughs> today, 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 the web is solving many computing needs in a way that's actually better for users, um, but in other ways is worse. And then there are these other options that are not the web that are better in some ways, uh, but then they have their downsides. And I think everyone is trying to solve the problem for users, and they're moving from different areas. So, like Alex, you've, you've, I'm re-saying words that you said in another context, but. The framing of your last statement was about like, we have to do this for the web, but what we really want to do is do it for the users. And what we want is we want to take all the good things about the web that other platforms have not been able to get yet. And in fact, might have very high hurdles to achieving, especially the decentralized nature of the web platform. So we want to take those benefits uh, and then combine them with you know, the other essentials necessary to solve daily computing needs of people. Yeah, my viewpoint is not important, but Aaron Biedman asked me the other day, um, like, why, why do I keep banging my head against this particular wall? And I had to think about it for a minute, but I realized it was that I was offended that software for a billion people could go backwards. Yeah. So anyway, I, I agree, right? But it's not just the web, right? So when you talk to people about it, it's not that we're dogmatic about the web. It's that the web has these really great properties decentralized platform is highly valuable and better for the long-term computing needs of, of, of people. It's got these you know, ephemeral, indexable, uh, very fast to load uh, capabilities. It's linkable, it's composable. It's safe, it's cross-platform. It's, it's non-proprietary. Like all these attributes are really, really great. Um, but it's deficient in some areas such as capabilities, right? So we want to bring those up. And then you can give examples. And I would highly advise, when you give examples, do it from the user perspective, right? So they say, oh, you're putting that capability on the web. You're going to be able to access the file system on a computer. Well, yes, users are going to do that one way or another. And the question is, can we offer a safer way for them to do that on the web than requiring them to install a native application, for example, or when they access a serial device, right? And so um, put in the user, like start with the user and their use case, and then look at the alternatives possible if we don't achieve our mission. But I'm not sure why everything you said isn't an argument for Electron. Because so Electron is fracturing a platform and providing a less secure runtime because it's not as updatable as browsers. The implementation via browsers is providing a more secure mechanism and more performance. Yeah, so the Electron, Electron answers the question for developers. So to a developer, the Electron is better. Uh, to, to a developer, Electron is everything the web has because they love developing for the web, but they're missing a bunch of capabilities. Electron has everything they that they want, but it's still bad for the user for the reasons that that Vince gave is that it is missing the superpowers of the web around um, immediate updatability, ephemerality, 
uh, sandboxing that you lose all of that when you switch, when you, when you, when you, when you move to electron and those are benefits that the developers don't care about, but it's but it benefits that the user does. <laughs> I think it's a really interesting conversation. I'm obviously a huge fan of doing this in the browser and making PWAs. Otherwise I wouldn't do this because I have choices. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a re I think it's a really interesting rude Q&A to address as we think about standards and we think about how other people have been solving this because they've been desperate to solve it. And they've done so in an insecure, non-performant, proprietary way uh, that isn't necessarily bad for end users. Um, because the end users don't know that this is bad for them. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's almost a theoretical or a philosophical conversation. Um, I think it is difficult to go into a W three C event and and use arguments. I mean, everybody there's for the web, right? So it, I don't know. It's it's. I think it's. I, I'm curious to see how this is going to play out uh, throughout the week. I'm also anticipating rude Q and A about like. Why am I even there? Because I'm now just a Chromium developer, so who cares? Like, why do I care about standards at all? So there's a lot going on in my head about how TPAC's gonna go next week. Um, and this has been on my mind, like the arguments for Fugu. And I feel like it's the right progress that we make toward the web by making these things secure for our end users and easy for our developers. But I'm not sure how to encapsulate that in a, in a business card or something. So I really like uh, Vince's characterization of this because um, it's kind of this, this could be the canned response, which is a more Socratic approach is asking, well, uh, some people may view as Fugu as threatening the web, like the security and stuff on the web. You could also view it as it's better for the user. I like this characterization saying that um, people are gonna do this anyway. So isn't it better to do it in a very safe platform? I like this. And it, it kind of opens the conversation for more. And, and it just is better at making converts to, the, to our religion. <laughs> it's not dogmatic, exactly. It's the anti-dogma dogma. Uh, while we're talking about benefit to users, I think it's often fun to share some of the delight that we get when, we, when things actually go well. Um, and being able to demonstrate some of that that we experience through PWAs might be helpful. Um, some powerful things on the web that I've seen recently, Photop or Photopia, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it, is it GIF or GIF? Um, uh, but you had to bring up religion. With, uh, <laughs> as, as someone who's used Photoshop a lot, I, you know, I get a new Windows machine uh, at work and I don't have administrator pr privileges yet. Um, and I want to install something better than Paint, sorry. Um, but <laughs> I, I like Paint.net as like a short alternative, but then why am I even trying to install an application when there's something available on the web that has all the power that I need? Um, and so that, that was something that I found really delightful. It was just, it solved that immediate need. I'd like to hear more things like that from other people and help. Turns out the web is pretty cool. <laughs> okay. uh, I think we should probably wrap up this particular conversation. I would say um, Tom has some really good questions and it looks like you're still searching for, I, I mean, the, the root FAQ is probably something that should be put together. Um, can awesome. Okay. Uh, let's see. One note that ended up in the agenda as future Fugu events, uh, somebody suggested a hackathon. Curious if anybody has thoughts on a hackathon. Knows how that showed up. Got a thumbs up. Um, I know that uh, my team, um, which is a small subset of the people that are here, uh, is planning to do a, a internal hackathon later in October. Um, but if folks have thoughts on external facing hackathons, sharing cool demos and so forth, love to hear it. Okay. I think the most useful for us is, is getting access to people like the security team, the UI people, 
So basically something like at Google I.O. you have office hours, so like office hours for people working on Google APIs. Uh, I guess that would be I guess that's, that's useful. I guess as this is for Chromium engineers, it might make sense to do this um, together with Blink on, maybe a day after or something like that. Uh, maybe not this Blink on, but maybe the next one. Yeah, I um, was just actually having the exact same thought. I know that we have Balaz here um, as uh, someone from the permission side and, and others from the privacy team. Um, I don't know what the best forum would be. I don't know how busy people are during TBAC, but I think it could be interesting to maybe schedule like two hours um, to just like sit down, especially with the external folks, both Microsoft and Intel, um, to give that opportunity at TPAC if we can find a spot. We have already done some of that here, like having awesome. breakouts, but like I'm thinking for like the future because yeah. we intend to continue working on Fugu going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, would love to do that continued in the next couple of the next week and then also on a more ongoing basis. Because I realize how frustrating it must be as an external being like, yeah, we're going to go figure out some of these things, and then you don't hear back for a long time. And usually the conversation keeps going. But yeah, I realize it's a black box, and we want to open it up. But even from our side, because you get an email, and, and I'm also busy with a lot of other things, and, and you need to respond and think about your response. But when you sit together around the table or something, like everything is just easy. Like You show things, you explain. Yeah, and, and it just works better. Real, yeah. real life interactions are great. All I'm saying is that both the permission team and the privacy team and me are all in Munich, and Oktoberfest starts the weekend weekend after <laughs> TPAC. <laughs> <laughs> and Lindsay will be there. Awesome. OK, uh, last few things. Uh, reminder that uh, at 7 PM tonight, uh, Chris Wilson and Hung Chan will be presenting at the WebXR and Web Music Meetup event link in the agenda. Um, I assume that'll be cool. <laughs> Want to self-promote? <laughs> Anything else to add? <laughs> OK. Yeah, so Hong Chan will be talking about the current state of audio device client and how it got there. And Chris Wilson's not going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, very last few things. Um, I want to say thank you to all of the attendees. Uh, this way blew past my expectations. Um, we had some incredible conversations, uh, lots of takeaways. Uh, thanks to everybody that helped with the logistics, Olivier and Chase and Daniel and everybody else that I'm forgetting. Uh, yeah. I. I showed up. Um, I, I would like to crowdsource shout outs. Uh, if anybody like, I really thought X was great or presentation, does anyone want to keep praise on anyone else? Just shout. Let's not bother with mics. Let's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep it fast. I'm going to shout in the mic. No. We can stop recording this software. Yeah. OK. So stopping the recording now, but uh, for everyone that's watching this, uh, thanks for sticking with us and, and putting up with the occasional corny joke. And see you next time. <laughs>